I will mention, inshallah, I will be just mentioning certain things that we need to do in preparation for Hajj. So, as I told you earlier also, that we are not been getting into the religious aspects of it, which means the method of performing Hajj and the faraiz and the wajibat and the things to do over there as far as the ibadah is concerned, that inshallah we will cover it next Jum'ah. But the whole session will be about that inshallah next week. But today I just would like to give you surgeon a list of things that you may have to uh, think that you need to get in order to prepare yourself uh, to go over there and inshallah through these things yeah, it will become easier for you over there. Make sure keep a copy of all of these things and keep them at your home. Make copies of it and keep them at your home. Copy of your passport or if you have a green card then whatever your status is, the copy of that. If you are making the copy of the passport then the first page and any other page that may have some important visas or anything like that on it. The first thing is, as you get your documents, your passport, your ticket, and inside your passport will be a check at the same time the copy of the visa for Hajj. Make copy of that page also. Copy of the check that you are given to the embassy because when you get the passport back, that check will be inside your passport. And every year we go through the situation that people when they receive the passport and they see the check is inside it, they start celebrating that the embassy forgot to get my, my, my check out. Okay? And then what they do is they take the check out and they cash it. Now, when they arrive over there at the airport, this is the question they get asked, where is your check? Oh, I don't know. I lost it. And now they will tell the person to pay it either right up there. This is what they used to do up to now. Last year I have seen the change and that was, okay, we'll give you this form. Go back, make sure you go and pay and the amount will be a little higher than what you would pay over here. So please, don't take that check out. It's not that they forgot. They will take it from you once you arrive at the airport over there. Anyway, keep copies of that. And the reason for that is that in case, God forbid, if the passport is lost, your ticket is lost, something is lost, you will be able to get copies of it and prove that this is what you had. So, and once you keep them home, of course, let someone know in the house that this is where I'm keeping all of my stuff. So that if you need them, they can fax it to you if needed, or at least they will have access to it and they will be able to give you the information from it. So this is number one, your ticket, your passport, all the important documents, may even be your credit card if you are keeping it with you. Keep the copies of all of these things. Normally, number two, normally, we have a habit of having a full wallet in our pocket. And our wallets normally are full, we have so many things in it. Empty it. Just take what you need. Make it as small in size as you can, not because of the weight of it, not because of the size of it, but in case you don't get it back, you don't bring it back with you. So, just keep what you need. And rest of the things, just keep them home. Number three, make sure that you confirm your tickets few days before the flight. Call the airline. The travel agent will tell us you're confirmed and everything is set. Still, we should call the airline to confirm the ticket few days before the flight because remember, the flights for Hajj are going full, full. There isn't, no, you won't find a single empty seat in it. And every travel
travel agent, of course, is trying to get the booking in the very same days and same flights. So if anyone gets the opportunity of putting your name out and putting his customer's name, he will do it. It doesn't happen very often. It does. Sometimes. And the only way of making sure that it doesn't happen to us, then we make, call, we make that phone call a few days before the flight and confirm that we have the seat. Yes, that's the term is used nowadays. I don't know where it came from. That is not zabiha, but it's halal. So we don't want to eat halal, we want zabiha, and they don't have the zabiha category. So go for the vegetarian food, as I said, just normal vegetarian or Asian vegetarian. Number four. Keep your pictures, some extra pictures, uh, passport side photos with you. In case, sometime you may need it at any time. And I have seen people needing it at different situations. So, keep some of these passport size uh, ID pictures with you so that if it's needed, and especially if in your passport you have an old picture where there is no beard, because that one, as they may call it, is not Zabiha, is halal. They do have the category of halal food. Don't go for that. <laughs> when you call for confirming, at the same time, book your meal. And the best thing to book as far as meal is concerned is either, either vegetarian food or better than that, Asian vegetarian. These are two different categories. One is just general vegetarian and the other is Asian vegetarian. Picture of your childhood and now you are grown up. Make sure that you keep one of the recent pictures, staple it at the end of your passport. Because what happens is, say, they are looking for your passport for some reason. And the person looks at you and he keeps on looking at your passport. He would never find it. Because he can never recognize you through your, your, your picture. So, you may tell them that no, don't try to recognize me through that picture. My past, my photo is at the end of the passport on the last page. There's a stapled over there. Look for that picture, you will know me. It's very important. It's very helpful in many situations over there. Number five. When you're keeping your money with you, credit cards are not very helpful over there. And the reason for that is, for using the credit card so that there is no fraud, they would ask you for a picture ID. And an ID that is recognized by a government. And you will not have your passport on you. As soon as we arrive over there, they will take the passport away from us. They will give it to back, back to us the day we will come back to the airport. You will not get your passport over there. So now, in order to be able to use your credit card, you may need that or cashier's check. Worst thing. Because for that, for sure, you need your passport. And you don't have it, you can't cash it. So, they're not very helpful. Maybe helpful in a situation where you're stuck and then you get someone to help you, the local person to be able to help you to cash it or something like this. So in case of emergency, maybe used, but not for a general use. So as far as money is concerned, then the easiest thing is to keep some cash with you. And as far as the cash, the best thing is keep hundred dollar bills. One is the volume will be small, which means you can have more money with a small volume, you can keep it wherever it's safe. Number two, when you exchange in the currency exchange, you will have more value for a hundred dollar bill than you would get for any bill smaller than that. So if you are getting three hundred and seventy dollars, three point seven zero we can say for uh, uh, um, exchanging with hundred dollar bill, you may get three point